Hi, welcome to our Boxing Day Top 3. If you're anything like me, you'll have eaten far too much yesterday, so today we're talking training. In third place, we've got this video of Uli Steck training for his trip to Everest. The expedition didn't quite go according to plan, but I don't think it was down to his fitness. Yeah, next spring I want to go back to Everest. You cannot go there and not be fit. It's 8,848 meters above sea level. There's not much oxygen in the, in the air, so it's a serious game, so you have to prepare yourself. So for us as alpinists, I think mountain running is, is the best way. So basically when I start running, I don't run really flat, maybe 10 minutes, and then it goes uphill for 1,000, 2,000 vertical meters. That's my basic running. Core strength, that's, that's the center of your body. That's where the power comes from. So uh, you do sit up, you do like pull ups. I mean, there's so many variations you can train. And that's also very, very important. It does not make sense to do the same exercise for three months. Six times a week I go running, for sure. Then three times I go lifting weights and three times I go climbing. That's more or less basic. In second place, we've got US climber Courtney Sanders putting us all to shame by training hard despite having a broken ankle. I was doing a climbing move. I just put too much torque on my ankle and my tendon snapped. And it was kind of like a freak accident. So now I'm kind of dealing with that. Chris Peters is my personal trainer. He kicks my butt. <laughs> he makes me do a lot of exercises that I probably normally wouldn't do by myself. And so he's been really helpful to allow me to do exercises that I can do with only one foot. We did planks and a lot of core exercises, which involved push-ups, bringing my knees to my chest. Um, a lot of things that are helpful for climbers because you're always like cutting your feet, kicking your feet back in, cutting your feet, kicking your feet back in. And it's really good to be able to be precise with your feet. And I want to be able to maintain that ability when I am ready to come back after my injury. So I've been trying using weights. Normally I'm pretty skeptical with using weights because I don't want to um, add any extra pressure on my tendons. Um, because I've only been climbing for four years, my, my tendons are probably a little more susceptible to being damaged than maybe someone who started when they were younger. However, I've been finding really great results from it and I've been doing it in a very, very safe method. And um, now when I pull on the wall without the weights, I feel like my strength is just drastically increased and um, it's definitely something that you can train when, when you're injured, it's pretty cool. At number one, it had to be Jan Hoja doing his single finger plank. If you've never seen this video before, bear in mind it should basically be impossible for a human being. Speaking of German climber Jan Hoja, some people are wondering just how he suddenly got so strong. Well, we've got the answer right here. Check out this ridiculous video of Jan training on his local wall. Dass mir niemand glaubt, dass ich nur 10 Stunden trainiere, genau, habe ich mitbekommen. Aber wenn man sich überlegt, dass man zwei Stunden schon echt ganz schön platt wird innerhalb einer Session und, nie, und nicht häufiger als viermal die Woche trainiert, dann passt das wahrscheinlich schon. Dann macht man auch zwei Stunden Ausgleichstraining, dehnt ein bisschen oder geht mal laufen und dann komme ich immer noch nicht über 15 Stunden. Also in der direkten Weltcup-Vorbereitung muss ich meistens besonders auf das Ausdauertraining ein bisschen ein Auge werfen, dass ich ab und zu mal 4x4 mache, um die nötige Substanz aufzubauen. Und Wenn du dick bist. Weil ich echt dick bin und mich nicht so lange festhalten kann, ja. Ich habe so ein bis zwei Goals am Tag mit so einer Stunde Pause dazwischen. Also dann kann ich mich auch bis zu 15 <lacht> Züge lang festhalten. Das ist echt ganz gut, wenn es in einer Runde mal läuft, ich ein paar Boulder mache, schöne Morpho-Varianten finde. Dann denke ich, das ist schon ganz cool, so groß und schwer zu sein. Eigentlich nur groß zu sein. Aber vor allem, wenn ich ein, zwei Mal in Nähe, ja, nur kurz vor dem Topgriff loslasse, dann denke ich mir, dass ja, leichtere Kletterei, fünf Minuten vielleicht noch einen zweiten Go hätte. That's it for today. See you tomorrow for the last of our top threes. Peak Parago Shah, 6770 Meter. And I think.